In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The cords of Sheol entangled me, the snares of death confronted me. In my distress I called upon the Lord, from his temple he heard my
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, graciously hear the prayers of your people, that we who justly suffer the consequence of our sin may be mercifully delivered by your goodness to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The first lesson for the Sunday, called Septuagesima, is written in the second book of Moses, known as Exodus, chapter 17. The whole Israelite community set out from the desert of Sin, traveling from place to place as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. So they quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses replied, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to the test? But the people were thirsty for water there, and they grumbled against Moses. They said, Why did you bring us up out of Egypt to make us and our children and livestock die of thirst? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, What am I to do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Walk on ahead of the people. Take with you some of the elders of the Israel, and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. I will stand there before you at the rock, by the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock, and water will come out of it for the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the place Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and because they tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. Thus, Lord, is a stronghold for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. the needy shall not always be forgotten, and the hope of the poor shall not perish forever. The second lesson is written in St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapters 9 and 10. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like a man running aimlessly. I do not fight like a man beating the air. No, I beat my body and make it my slave, so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. For I do not want you to be ignorant of the fact, brothers, that our forefathers were all under the cloud and that they all passed through the sea. They were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. They all ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from the spiritual rock that accompanied them, and that rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them. Their bodies were scattered over the desert. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Out of the depths I cry to you. Let your ears be attentive 
to the voice of my pleas for mercy. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness that you may be feared. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 20th chapter. Glory be to you, O Lord. The words of Jesus. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire men to work in his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and sent them into his vineyard. About the third hour, he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, you also go and work in my vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour and did the same thing. About the eleventh hour, he went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. The workers who were hired about the eleventh hour came, and each received a denarius. So when those came who were hired first, they expected to receive more. But each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. These men who were hired last only worked one hour, they said, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, Friend, I am not being unfair to you. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the man who was hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O God.
Grace and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. It's still 70 days away yet. Are you ready? Ready for Easter? It's not like Christmas. You're not going to hear Easter music playing in the stores to get you in the holiday spirit for weeks, even months in advance. You won't be bombarded by commercials reminding you to buy your Easter gifts for everyone on your list. It probably sounds ridiculous. And yet for Christians, 70 days out is not too early to start thinking about Easter. That's because Christians always have their eyes on the resurrection. The resurrection of our Lord and the resurrection of our own mortal bodies. It's still 70 days out, but there's much preparation to be made. In church, we call this time of preparation Lent. But even now, three weeks before Lent, we're already getting ready. Preparing our hearts for this journey. As we do, we hear St. Paul's warning today from his letter to the Corinthians. For even most of those Israelites under Moses were destroyed in the wilderness. The very people who saw the, the plagues against Egypt with their own eyes, with, they heard with their ears the wailing of the Egyptians on that terrible night when every firstborn was slaughtered. The very people who drank from the rock in the wilderness. Those who bore the, the heat of the day for 40 years of wandering. Even they fell away from the faith. And it says most were displeasing to the Lord. For as the book of Hebrews says, without faith it is impossible to please God. So... If they could fall, well then you too, like the Israelites, you could be disqualified from this race of faith. Even St. Paul himself, he knew that even he could be disqualified. For God is no respecter of persons. You can't bargain with him. For he is like a man who gives to each worker, even those who worked only an hour, the same wages as those hired at six in the morning. Now you can come and try to argue for a better deal if you'd like. But watch out, if you don't have him on his terms, you just might get him on yours. Beware, lest he say to you, take your pay and go. Take your pay. Your wages, what is due you? What horrifying words. We often think that that's what we want. We think we want justice, we want fairness, we want what's coming to us, but, but stop and think about that for a moment. Think about it. If, if you really received what you deserved, let's say for every cruel word that you have spoken, Our Lord says in Matthew's Gospel that everyone who speaks a curse against his brother is subject to the fire of hell. Surely you've, you've daydreamed about, about exacting revenge on someone who's done you wrong. Imagine, imagine if all of your neighbors' similar daydreams about you came true. No, we don't want justice. We want mercy. Justice is for each one to get what is due him. Mercy is not getting what you deserve. Mercy is getting better than you deserve. Mercy is getting a full day's wage for an hour's work. Mercy is a, is a father running out to hug and, and kiss his son who has ruined his in inherited fortune in a distant land. Mercy is a, is a shepherd who goes and leaves 99 sheep to go and search for one. No, no mercy is a shepherd who dies for sheep who go astray. Mercy and grace, those are shown then most clearly on the cross, that 
most unfair of all places. For on the cross, he who had no sin became sin for us so that we might become in him the righteousness of God. But there's no such thing as a free lunch. You can't just run a business by paying people a day's wage for an hour's work. Somebody's got to pay the bill. And on the cross, the bill of God's wrath against humanity's sin came due. And your tab was picked up by Christ. You are forgiven and free. The debt is paid. The wage you didn't earn has been credited to your account. You are now in him, the righteousness of God. You get what Christ deserved because he got what you deserved. This blessed exchange. Christ in our place on the cross is our only hope of salvation. On the last day, you can stand in the grace of Christ or you can stand on your own. If you stand in the grace and the mercy of Christ, you will receive the reward which he has earned. Not a denarius, not a day's wage, but everlasting life. But should you stand on your own, then you take your pay and go. The wages of sin is death. Everlasting death. So my dear Christians, cling to Christ. In him is life and outside of him is death. Like St. Paul, take this as a serious warning. Don't run this Christian race in vain. With fear and trembling, cultivate your salvation, for it is God who works in you to will and to do according to his pleasure. Do not think of leaving God's Christ's grace. To be outside of him is to be dead. So stay in him. You are God's beloved child. You cannot live apart from the care of your heavenly father. You were born again into the kingdom of grace through holy baptism. All your sins were washed away and you are given new spiritual life. This new life now needs to be nurtured and cultivated. But God has not even left you without, on your own to figure out how this should happen. No, his kingdom is a kingdom of grace. Your life in him began in your, his, with his gift of baptism. This gracious new birth of water and the word is the, the gracious outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It is putting on Christ and putting you into Christ. It has lasting effects in your life because it has given you new life a new life that is rooted and made stronger every time you receive that same word of absolution of forgiveness and holy absolution a new life that is nourished every time you receive the lord's body and blood in the, the holy supper for the forgiveness of your sins that is how you stay in the faith sometimes people will make the claim of, well you don't have to go to church to be a christian But if you want to stay one, that's not a given. And this is the Christian race that Paul writes about, to, to struggle with, with the, the enemies, against the enemies of, of the world, your flesh, and the devil. Struggling, to staying in the kingdom of grace, by staying a child of the Father, by having your Christian life renewed again and again by God's gracious work in word, and sacrament. Don't be mistaken. You have enemies that want to pull you away from this. They want you to stand on your own. They want you to go, your, go it alone. Stay away from the sacrament. Ignore God's word. Try to think that you'll pass God's judgment by trying your best. Or to simply encourage you to live in willful sin that destroys faith. like a focused athlete that ignores the taunts of the crowd or the taunts of his opponents. 
you, dear Christian, ignore the enticing voices of your enemies as you focus on the goal. Like a, ma- like a worker who has not worked and earned his wage, trust in your master's grace and not in your own toil. <coughs> like a prodigal son who has no hope but his father's mercy, cling to him alone. Like a Christian, cling Turn away from from every other hope and cling to Christ alone. Yes, come to the Lord's table and receive him and with him his forgiveness, grace, and mercy. Yes, Easter may be a long ways off. Likewise, sometimes the resurrection seems a long ways off. It looks the way a finish line looks to a weary runner. It looks the way that a land flowing with milk and honey looks to Israelites wandering in the wilderness. It may be long. It may be hard. But it is a journey of grace. So run. It'll be here before you know it. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We join now in confessing the Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty.
Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus. For the Holy Church, that all who have been called into the vineyard of the Lord would recognize their unworthiness for such a gracious gift. Rejoice in the salvation they have in Christ and remain steadfast in the word. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all pastors in Christ, that they would gladly preach the saving gospel to all, not counting the cost and not for their own glory or praise of men, but for Christ's glory alone. For all other church workers, that they, all they would do would be in service to this same saving gospel. And for an increase in these vocations, that the Lord of the harvest would use his fellow, his laborers as his blessed instruments in bringing sinners into the vineyard of his redemption and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for our congregation, that we would love one another as Christ has loved us. Give generously to support the ministry here and abroad. Pray for our enemies. Put away all earthly grumbling and bask in the gracious provisions our Lord lavishly bestows on us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the nations of the world, that justice, peace, and the common good of all would be the goal of all those in and under authority. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for all those suffering or recovering from illness, for those who are sad or sorrowful, for those suffering from broken relationships or financial distress, for those to, for whom death draws near, for those who are grieving, that Christ would be their health in sickness, their joy in sorrow, and their life in death. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who come to the table of our Lord this day, that they would receive the very body and blood of Jesus in repentance and faith. And to their abundant blessing, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the faithful who have gone before us and enjoy heavenly bliss, let us give thanks and praise that we may be brought to share with them the feast of joy that never ends in the eternal vineyard of our Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Blessed are you, O Lord of heaven and earth. We praise and thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, and we remember the great acts of love through which he has ransomed us from sin, death, and the devil's power. By his incarnation, he became one with us. By his perfect life, he fulfilled your holy will. By his innocent death, he overcame hell. By his rising from the grave, he opened heaven. Invited by your grace and instructed by your word, we approach your table with repentant and joyful hearts. Strengthen us through Christ's body and blood, and preserve us in the true faith until we feast with him and all his ransomed people in glory everlasting. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take ye, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, O Lord, according to his institution, we, your servants, celebrate here before your divine majesty. With these, your holy gifts, the commemoration your Son has willed us to make, remembering his blessed passion, mighty resurrection, and glorious ascension. We give you most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits he has secured for us, and we humbly ask you to grant that by his merits and death and through faith in his blood, we and your whole church may receive forgiveness of sins and all other benefits of his passion. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the The 
peace of the Lord be with you always.
We give you thanks, O Lord, for the foretaste of the heavenly banquet that you have given us to eat and to drink in this sacrament. Through this gift, you have fed our faith, nourished our hope, and strengthened our love. By your Spirit, help us to live as your holy people until that day when you will receive us as your guests at the wedding supper of the Lamb, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace.
Good morning, welcome. This is our day for our quarterly congregational meeting, so we will begin that shortly. It'll take a couple minutes to uh, get set up and to pass out. We should have uh, reports and agendas available for you to just take a few moments. God be with you. <laughs> 